Nintendo ninjas are widely considered to be a myth by many in the gaming community. However, there are some personal experiences that people can attest to. I received a phone call one day from an established friend in the Nintendo YouTube community who said he had information to tell me in person that would be sensitive. We'll refer to him as Douglas for the remainder of the video. On the phone, he sounded distressed, concerned. All he told me was that the news involved Nintendo and something that was crucial for him to share with me. This incident happened around the last two years and it revolved around a major leak which had happened on Nintendo's end. This is nothing new for a lot of us who've kept up with these instances. This one in particular was especially egregious with the way that it was done. There was definitely an inside man involved from what Nintendo's perspective was and they were doing all that they could to get to the bottom of it. We went to a secluded restaurant in Times Square where we could discuss this issue and the details could be shared without too many ears listening in. Even though I thought that it was a little unnecessary, he didn't seem to think so. His body language seemed off from what this friend is usually like. There was a extra sense of distress in his voice as well. And even though it was 2 p.m. in the afternoon, he insisted that we take some shots before we begin the story. I think that tells a lot of where his mind might have been. He came home from running errands outside as any other day. His mother told him that there were two individuals who had come earlier looking for him and asking to speak with him who were dressed in business suits and seemed to have an air of professionalism about them. He goes up to his room and later in the day, the individuals show up again. When he looked outside, after the doorbell rang, he noticed a large black suburban parked across the street. Later on, after this incident, he asked his friends if they had seen this car earlier and they said apparently it had been waiting since morning time. Maybe he left to do errands earlier in the day and therefore they might have missed him. When he goes to answer the door, there are two people there and I'll be referring to these as Agent A and B. They introduce themselves by name and then they show identification that they're with Nintendo. In his own words, instantaneously his heart sank and knowing him personally and the type of projects he's worked on, he actually had nothing to do with the leaks in question but due to the nature of how he carried himself online and maybe other people dropping names here and there, for some reason, these agents decided to make their way to his house without even revealing how they found him in the first place. Now, being understandably curious, his mother inquires as to the identity of the two gentlemen at the door. And after knowing that they're from Nintendo, she obviously is excited about it because she knows that her son does work in the ecosystem of YouTube and Nintendo. His mother goes to get snacks and refreshments for the two gentlemen and Douglas invites them inside. One thing to clarify is that they weren't forceful, but because they are employees of Nintendo with verified identities, he simply felt the need to invite them in just to be cordial, especially towards a company that we've all grown up with. As soon as they sit down, one of the agents opens up a briefcase and begins to showcase pictures of tweets, screenshots of messages, and other information pertaining to this massive leak that happened. He also pulls out pictures of individuals asking if Douglas is affiliated, knows any of them, or how to get in contact with them. He noticed that one of the agents was completely silent most likely recording the situation using some sort of concealed means. Their demeanors were direct, firm, and inquisitive. And even though they agreed to have refreshments prepared by the mother, when they were presented to them, they never even ate anything. After speaking with him for an hour and not getting any valuable information out of him, they decided to take their leave. But not before leaving a plethora of different ways to communicate with the two agents, including email and business card with phone numbers. While he was telling me this story inside of the restaurant, he showed me these specific items. I've seen it with my own eyes. Just as swift and ominous as these agents made themselves known, they vanished. And to this day, he's never contacted them or heard anything back from them again. In terms of what the Nintendo ninjas are, this is subject to interpretation. Maybe it could be their legal team or some sort of damage control to protect intellectual property or leaks. And despite a lot of details of this story being omitted or changed for the sake of privacy concerns, there are still a lot of factors to this, which I know personally that I just can't share with you all that strike me as somewhat disturbing and kind of badass to be honest with you. And if a trusted friend with a true story with certifiable documentation isn't enough to prove to you that this might be something legitimate, I've even had almost my own personal brush in with the Nintendo ninjas due to a certain foolish instance of trolling that I <laughs> sort of engaged in at one point. Even if you don't believe the rumors of the legends or the myths themselves, 
I can tell you from my own personal experience and from stories that my friend Douglas had told me and stuff I've seen from others online that the Nintendo ninjas do exist. And even though we don't know how the entity themselves operate, we have seen traces of them and they may be coming for you next depending on what you do online. Don't be surprised if you see a large black suburban down the street from you in the future.